Welcome to each of you this morning. A blessed Christmas bit wish to all of you as well. We begin this morning saying, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God the Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who proclaims salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. When the fullness of time came, God sent forth his son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those under the law so that we might receive adoption as sons. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth.
John writes in our gospel lesson, in him was life and the light, life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. Heavenly Father, too frequently we live in the darkness of unbelief. Forgive us, Lord, for our sins of the night, for clinging to the darkness, for our secret and hidden sins, for the sins we have done to please ourselves, for the sins we have done to please others. Forgive those sins which we know and those sins which we do not know. Forgive our sin of apathy, callous indifference, failure to protest injustice. Forgive our sin of grief, giving only what we can spare. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Believe and receive the gospel. Christ was prophesied. Christ was born. Christ was tempted. Christ was arrested. Christ was crucified. Christ was raised. Christ did it all for you, for your redemption and your restoration, for your salvation and your resurrection. The word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, the glory of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have shined upon us the marvelous light of your incarnate word, Jesus. Grant that his light, kindled in our hearts, may shine forth in our lives. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for this Christmas day is from the Old Testament book of Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice, together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has com comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The second reading for this day is from the New Testament book of Galatians, chapter 4. But when the fullness of time had come, God sent forth his Son, born of a woman, born under the law, to redeem those who were under the law, so that we might receive adoption as sons. And because you are sons, God has sent the spirit of his son into our hearts, crying, Abba, Father. So you no longer are a slave, but a son. And if a son, then an heir through God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness does not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to bear witness about the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light which gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Good morning, and God's blessings on this beautiful Christmas day. I just want to wish you both, uh, both your family and you individually, uh, God's blessings. And I pray that the peace of Christ and his presence might truly uh, bless you now and always. A Christmas day is really uh, such a special day, isn't it? Uh, it's a day that we, we all wait for, and as, particularly as a child, we are expecting just to be together, but uh, to open gifts and just the excitement of uh, the, uh, the, uh, the um, unexpected uh, is 
uh, really something that I can remember uh, just as an adult and I can remember uh, as a child. Uh, there was always something that I was going to receive that I didn't really understand fully. And when we think about Christmas, um, it's really like the first day of creation or the first day of recreation. Uh, in the book of Genesis, it says that uh, in the beginning that God created with a word, that the Spirit of God hoovered over the waters and God spoke, let there be light, and there was light. And the whole process of creation began with that word. And when we look at the child in the manger, uh, we see this uh, family together, and uh, it looks so innocent, uh, so simple. And yet it's so huge and filled with meaning. Uh, this child, John tells us, is the very word of God. As God sends his son into human flesh, he sends it into that darkness like that first day of creation. And in that word, God creates something out of nothing. And if we think of God sending Jesus Christ, his only son, to be the very word of a new beginning, he brings light and revelation of God's love. He reveals to us a hope of the future. And with his word, he begins a process of redeeming us from all that sin has broken. It's such a beautiful, wonderful moment and such a wonderful day. And if, on this day, I know um, our family was always on their best behavior. Maybe yours was too. Uh, we all tried to get along and we all tried to uh, express our love for each other. On this one day, everybody wanted to know uh, that they were loved and everybody tried to express that love to each other. And we do it in so many different ways. We, we uh, do it by buying a gift. Uh, and you know uh, how hard it is sometimes to find that right gift. So it takes a lot of effort to buy that gift. And it, we do it by sending a card. We do it by uh, making that telephone call that we have not made during the year, but today we make it. Or we make a visit, we stop over at a friend or we stop over at a relative's home and we just say, God bless you and Merry Christmas to you. And we do it with a hug. And sometimes, like today, uh, that hug may be virtual. But it's an expression of our love. But all that we do, all the expressions and all the wonderful ways in which we express our love for each other, can't compare to the love that God is showing to us through his Son. Because as God sends Christ to be born in human flesh, the scriptures say he is Emmanuel. He is God with us. And he literally has given us a gift that was totally unexpected, a gift of himself. You know, when couples come to our Savior's way to be married, uh, we always uh, encourage them to take the premarital marital classes that uh, we have for them. And during those classes, I, I know I have had privilege to uh, be with many different couples. And in those conversations, I have always stressed uh, that the most expensive words that we can ever say to one another is, I love you. If you tell someone that you love them, you're literally giving them your life. You're giving them your time, your talent, your treasure, but you're literally giving them yourself. And as the scripture says that uh, when we make a commitment in marriage or we make a commitment to love one another, it's for better or for worse. We, we love them no matter what. And that reflects what God is doing for us in Jesus Christ. John tells us that God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. So as God loves, he literally gives himself to us. And all that uh, we are and all that we 
we have uh, together in our humanity, God embrace. He embraces all of our brokenness. And as he comes to us, he shares to us all that belongs to God, his forgiveness, his righteousness, and he gives to us eternal life. You know, it's an unexpected gift. And no one uh, was more uh, unexpected to receive this gift than the shepherds. I love the story of the shepherds, that they're out there in the field, they're watching their uh, sheep, uh, they're uh, just uh, going through a normal night. And suddenly that night becomes extraordinary because the angels come and they begin to speak to them and they sing to them and they reveal to them that a Savior is born who is Christ the Lord. And he is in the city of David waiting for them to come and worship him. And more than just inviting them, they assure the shepherds that this gift is for all people. It's for them. And so these shepherds who are poor, they're shepherds who are uh, really on the edge of society, who do not expect to be recognized by anyone, are recognized by the very creator and the very Lord of lords, the King of kings, comes to them and says, unto you, I give you this gift, the gift of life in my son. And it says, fear not, for behold, I bring you tidings of great joy. This shall be to all people, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Isn't that amazing? Unto all of us, this gift is given. Whether you are uh, religious or whether you're not religious, it doesn't matter. God has sent a gift of love for you, the gift of his son, that you might know his presence and experience the gift of eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Um, you know, the incarnation is really uh, a mystery. Uh, we can't really explain how God can be in human flesh or how flesh can be united with uh, the very creator of the universe or the, the very uh, essence of God. But this is what the scripture says, that God has joined himself to you and to me. The creator has uh, not only become one with us, but he's come to bless us. I love the uh, song by Johnny Mathis, uh, Do You Hear What I Hear? Do you, I, I'm sure you're familiar with it. They play it uh, 10 times a day, but uh, when I hear it, I still love it. And in that uh, song, the wind says to the lamb, do you see what I see? And then the lamb says to the shepherd, did you hear what I heard? And then the shepherd goes to the king and says, do you know what I know? And the king says, this child who is shivering in the night will give you forgiveness and light. This is a gift in order to bless us with all that we need for life. I love it. But if you change those words, do you hear what I hear? And do you see what I see? And you change it to God's perspective, it's, it becomes really interesting. Do you hear what God hears? Do you see what God sees? And do you know what God knows? And if you answer those questions, what God sees is our brokenness. What God hears is our sorrow, our grief, and our prayers. And what God knows is that we need a Redeemer, that we need help. And so he's come in Jesus Christ to do for us what we could never do for ourselves, to bear that suffering, to carry that sorrow, even to die that we might have salvation and life. And so the angels began to sing in Gloria in order to just express the awe that God would do such a thing. 
And the shepherds, when they went to see Jesus, it says they went and they told everybody, you can't believe what just happened. Have you seen what I've seen? Have you heard what I've heard? Do you know what I know? God has sent his son, Jesus Christ, to be our savior. Isn't it great? I want you to know he's here for you because God said he's here for all people. You know, Christmas is truly a holiday that blesses every day. It blesses us because it makes every day special and it reminds us that every person is blessed or every person is truly blessed in God's sight. You know, as uh, we look at this child, uh, if you look at the uh, pyramids here, we, we look at a child and we adore that child. But as we recognize that Jesus has come to give life to all people, suddenly then every life, whether it be a shepherd or a wise man, male or female, young or old, rich or poor, whether it be black or white, whether it be uh, born or unborn, and still in their mother's womb, that child is precious in God's sight. Every child becomes lifted up today because God has become a child for us. When the shepherds found Mary and Joseph, uh, they went and proclaimed the goodness of God's salvation. And when I think of what gift we can give to God on this Christmas day, we have nothing to give except what God has given to us, our very life. If Christmas means that God in love has given his life to us, if we love God, then the only gift that would be appropriate is for you and I to give our lives to him, to yield our life to do his will, so that others might know his peace and find life in Jesus' name. Our Christmas gift is really a gift of life. And the gift that we would give to God is that same gift that he has given, the very life of our own. If you would pray with me. Lord, thank you for sending your son to be our savior Thank you for looking upon each of us this Christmas with kindness and love. Thank you for giving your life as a sacrifice for our sins. We have nothing to give you except ourselves. Use our lives to bless the poor, our talents and gifts to strengthen the unity of all people, and our love to heal the brokenness around us and to share your peace. O oh Lord, we yield our life to you this morning, and we pray that we might begin to do your will, that the world might find life in Jesus' name. Amen. God's blessings to you, and uh, I pray that you experience his peace. Amen. The response to the prayers petitions today is and dwelt among us, we pray. Dear Lord Jesus, though you've existed forever in a rich, joyful, loving relationship with the Father and the Holy Spirit, today we celebrate your coming to us and for us. You are the promised and much longed for Christ, the Messiah. Every promise God has made finds its fulfillment, its unequivocal yes in you, we delight to confess the word, become fresh, and dwelt among us. Dear Lord Jesus, with angels, archangels, and all the company of heaven, we rejoice in the day angels sang, shepherds ran, and Mary pondered. We exchange gifts and sing and celebrate and pray. Why? The word became flesh, and dwelt among us. Dear Lord Jesus, we praise you for being born in Bethlehem, 
the house of bread, for we were a famished people, yearning for hope and wholesomeness, safety, security, and salvation. That's why you came as the bread of life, and you've been brought the feast of the gospel to our souls. We praise you that the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Dear Lord Jesus, we thank you for entering our world in the town of David, Israel's shepherd king. For what King David could never be, you've become for us, the good shepherd who laid down his life for his sheep. And now you care for us with relentless tenderness and persistent kindness. That's why we joyfully confess the word became flesh and dwelt among us. Dear Lord Jesus, as the King of kings and Lord of lords, you are presently reigning over all things and working in all things for your glory and our good. Hallelujah. No other kingdom is everlasting but yours. No other king is as loving. Nothing these things, knowing these things to be true, we have a peace which passes all understanding, mercies which cannot be measured and grace upon grace. Jesus, we pray in your tender and trustworthy name. Amen. Now taught by our Lord, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, on this Nativity of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, I wish you all a very Merry Christmas. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and grant you his peace. Amen.
Now on this joyous day, go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. As I reflect and remember Christmases of the past, I recall with fondness fondness waking up as a child to a train set under the tree. I remember a quiet, snowy night going home after a midnight worship service and being with many of you celebrating the birth of our Lord in worship. Along with our Christmas services, this year has been different and difficult not just in our area, but throughout the world. We've had to be more patient and flexible. Here at Our Savior's Way, we've had to say goodbye to staff while adapting to new roles and changing responsibilities. While we might wish that things would remain the same, the world is constantly changing around us, and it seems like it's changing faster than ever before. As I remember and hold on to fond memories, I can also see that God is still with us. By his grace and his mercy, our Savior's way has been able to proclaim his gospel message in new and innovative ways like never before. Even during the pandemic, we were able to baptize 10 children, teach and confirm 23 students in the faith, marry couples, and hold 10 memorial services, both in person and online. A 24 by 7 prayer vigil was started, and people called to check in on one another. Small groups began meeting virtually, outdoor events were held, and new programming was introduced in order to bring members closer together spiritually, even when we were physically apart. We also applied for grants and received them. We provided for a way to help our open arms employees. We held virtual congregation meetings, conducted surveys, elected officers, and refinanced our mortgage. We started recording our worship services and created a new drive-in worship service. We've upgraded our AV equipment and have begun to live stream our worship services. This was done while we provided support to our missionaries and ministered through our Grief Share, Comfort Dog, and Stephen Ministries. We continued to pick up food and deliver it to those in need. We donated almost 400 Thanksgiving bags along with $4,000 worth of gift cards this year. And we paid utility bills for those in need in our community. While Christmas has been different this year, we were still able to come together, either virtually or in person, to celebrate the birth of our Lord Jesus Christ. He is the true gift and reason for our joy and celebration. And it's because of what he has done for us that we can look forward and hope, even as we fondly remember the past. Thank you for being part and supporting the ministries of Our Savior's Way. I wish you a joyous and blessed Christmas.